This is the sleeping mat that I'm using. This is the previous sleeping mat I was using. But this one is just about fully compressed. This isn't compressed fully. You can see the difference in size. Welcome folks, it's Nick here. I'm posing another question. With regards to moto camping, does bulk matter? I have all my camping gear in this 60 litre, which is quite large, SW Motec dry bag. It weighs overall 15 kilos. I've tested most of the kit on my big trip around Europe and the rest of the kit more recently on a two week trip up to Scotland. So I know that the gear I've got is very comfortable. Should I worry that it's so bulky? It sits on the back of a motorcycle after all, on the passenger seat, and passenger seats take passengers normally. My CB500X, I don't think the 15 kilos really matters, but I'd welcome your opinion. Hopefully you'll find something to like in this video, and if you do, please do like it. Add your comments and thoughts in the comment section below and I will go back to them. And unusually, there's no motorcycle again in this video. Uh, it's because the weather in the UK, it's early January, has been pretty dire. Today's the first day the sun's come out and uh, I'd made the decision already that I wouldn't go on the bike because the weather had been so bad and I have plans now so I have to quickly do this before I go out. Anyway, no further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so this is the camping gear spread out on the ground sheet, which is a Van Gogh ground sheet protector, which works very well. It just gives an extra layer of protection underneath the built-in ground sheet in the tent. Talking of the tent, of course, I use the Van Gogh Trifan 300 and yes, it's a three person tent and there's only me. So why am I doing that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's really spacious and I enjoy that. I can bring in all the gear and still have room in the tent to move around in either side of the sleeping mat, sleeping bag. It's really configurable. It uh, has a separate fly sheet and which does mean that you have to erect the inner first and then the fly over the top of it so if it's raining it's a little bit mm, never mind though um, but you can of course elect not to put the fly on at all it has two doors really really comfortable but it is quite bulky not sure of the weight i'll put the weight up in a moment but uh does that matter if it's really comfortable i've used it in some really heavy storms and it's been rock solid it was me that was uh, i got bad night's sleep because i was worried about the tent i needn't have worried at all it's absolutely fine so anyway that's the mango trifan 300 as i say it's fairly bulky next item i wanted to cover was the sleeping mat itself it's a sea to summit sea to summit camping plus self-inflating sleeping mat and as you can see that's it just about fully compressed it will go a little bit smaller than that it's very bulky it self inflates which saves the effort you still have to top it up and I use one second please I use a trichology bag to do the topping up people do use bin liners and things like that or just mouth but it is very comfortable it's very well insulated i'll find the insulation figures and, and put them in either the description or, or on the video itself but we'll have a look at that in a minute i've also gone for a goose down sleeping bag now it's a slap lecker 800 it's again a high R rating, I think it's 4.2. It's a mummy bag. I really wasn't convinced about mummy bags. Uh, my previous bag was just a standard bag and it, it was synthetic material. It wasn't very warm. It didn't compress very well. But this one compresses to the size you can see. 
and actually it's very comfortable I was amazed I sleep very well in it um, I haven't used it in hot temperatures but it does unzip so uh, in the warm climes it should be okay in the colder climes I don't think it dropped below sort of three degrees when I've been using it in Scotland so it still has to be fully tested but I'm pleased with it and so those three sort of major pieces of kit I'm very comfortable and, uh, and happy with. A couple of other bits for the sleeping arrangements is a Euro hike mummy liner and an A-lift pillow. They work well. Just taking a look at some of the other kit that I take for my kitchen which is very lightweight I don't do much cooking on it it's really for things like coffee and rehydrating hydrated foods so I didn't really need much but I've just got a, a generic mug which keeps things slightly warm a very generic a uh, little pot and pan set, which I'll show you in a minute, with a very generic uh, stove, collapsible cup, collapsible saucepan, little water bag, knife and fork spoon kit, and this, which I haven't had to use, is the windshield for the camping stove itself. When camping, electrical hookups, you need electrical hookup type cables, so I've got a couple of those. Um, one is a short extension, and when travelling abroad, I can plug in the uh, adapter, or use it in the UK, whatever, but it's very short. And there's an extension cable with the UK um, sockets on, so that's very useful. Last bits, really, are couple of lights just USB chargeable and the obligatory trowel. I also have an active era chair which yes I do use the chair and again it adds bulk but it is quite comfortable. A couple of things I wanted to mention about bulk. This is the sleeping mat that I'm using the Sea to Summit uh, Camp Plus. It's really, really comfortable. It's very warm, well insulated. This is the previous sleeping mat I was using, a Trekology AL, A Luft UL 80, which I found quite cold in the UK when I did a trial run. But this one is just about fully compressed. This isn't compressed fully. You can see the difference in size. Does it matter? They don't weigh a great deal of difference, but um, it's sitting on the back of the bike. And likewise, the tent. This is Buckinghamshire Palace, my Trifan 300. And so it's a three person tent. This is a two person tent, a He Wolf, sort of a generic make. I didn't find that very comfortable. It was just too cold in there, even in the British springtime. Um, again, there is a weight difference. I'll put the weights up. Um, does it matter? Comfort factor. I'm comfortable whilst I'm camping. And we're talking of one or two kilos saved and a few cubic centimetres or whatever it is. Does it really matter? Let's see it all set up and uh, see what we think. <laughs> Would be a perfect configuration without the fly sheet on and you can see some of the vents <laughs>
so that's it in its basic configuration of course you can use the guy lines to keep it all down let's have a look inside just topping up the self-inflating sleeping mat This is the simple camping setup. Oh, this is the simple cooking setup I have. Just a generic little stove, a collapsible pot. Functions very well for making coffees in the morning. A cheap seat. Works well. Quite bulky, but comfortable. And then inside, plenty of room. Cheers. And so, the question I posed at the beginning of this video was, does bulk matter? The equipment I am using, I find very comfortable. It's bulkier than it need be, possibly. Maybe go for a smaller tent. Maybe go for a more compact uh, sleeping mat. I have to excuse the plane going overhead. But all in all, does it matter? It weighs 15 kilos. Maybe I could shave a kilo or two off. But then with a tank of fuel, you know, the 17 litres weigh <laughs> kilos. Yeah, so should I always ride with a partial filled tank? It sits on the passenger seat rather than on the rear rack. So it's not too far back and it's quite well balanced. So but you can make your own mind up about how you travel. I'd be interested to hear your comments and all that remains for me to do now is just say bye for now. Thank you.